Oh, thank you so much for joining me today, Elliot. Um, I'm Alice. I work at Art Call Gallery as the assistant curator. Um, and I guess I've just come in the middle of um, when you've been uh, developing your, your ideas for the master's degree show um, and how you're going to present your work online on our website. So I thought today would be a really good chance to hear more about you and your work and what your plans are. Um, so I thought we'd start off by just asking you to introduce yourself and your practice. Okay, so I'm Elliot. I'm an analogue photographer based in South Yorkshire. Mm -hmm. So I sort of work across a few different types of cameras, the larger ones, the smaller ones, colour, black and white, etc. Mm -hmm. I've um, sort of spent the last year or so working on a project called Ancora, which is the Italian word for anchor. It's got quite a few other means and light works like that. Okay. And it's basically just illustrating my experience of living with bipolar disorder and some physical okay. health conditions yeah. through the visual medium. I have sort of thought lockdown happened, everything got exacerbated. So I just thought, right, let's throw it out there let's just yeah. turn it into a body of work amazing so so is that the work that you're submitting for your master's degree show Elliot yeah right behind me this is um sort of what's been submitted to university all the photos are taken on film scanned in and digitally printed it just gives me a bit of versatility allows me to work a bit faster yeah so yeah the wall behind me is um the product of years worth of work I and a lot of wallpaper see. stripping <laughs> <laughs> so so you've so you've used a, a collection i guess of equipment and different types of cameras um could you just talk to me a little bit about that and how how using different um yeah cameras relates to the concept of your work is it something that's quite conceptual or more that you're interested in that as a um like process technical thing I think some of it is down to technical. So some the two mm -hmm. larger photos behind me, they were taken on five by four large formats. Okay. So obviously sat on a tripod, trigger release in my hand. It was it's they're really fun to work with and I sort of use them quite a lot in the past. Yeah. So I think I'm quite attached to them in a weird way. Yeah. I really did want to use them. I've also had to choose cameras based on their suitability. Okay. So medium formats like my baby. I love my medium <laughs> format camera. Yeah. But obviously the lenses aren't particularly fast, so if it, the weather's not good, it's a bit dreary, it's quite hard to get a decent photo. Okay. So I saw it's a bit of suitability and a bit of love for the camera. Yeah, that's really interesting though. And have you, um, so you said that you've worked in this way previously, was photography something that you studied before your Masters or was it just a hobby? <laughs> um, it's a bit of a weird one for me because I did my undergraduate in law with French law and oh, wow. it, it was very interesting and I got to move to France for a year and it it was cool but it <laughs> wasn't really for me so I sort okay. of finished my undergraduate um took it up as a hobby and sort of self-taught myself it was incredibly lucky to get a place on the master's degree amazing and yeah I've kind of just run with it since then oh wow and so so how so when did you how much time did you leave in between that did you have a few years really experimenting with photography or did you go it was two years I finished my LLB in 2016 and started in 2018. So okay. I did have that two years to play around. I worked, got some money up for uni and stuff. And yeah. I, w I think it was the right thing to do to leave it two years because it did let me progress and find my own style. Mm -hmm. So it was really beneficial having that gap. That sounds amazing. Wow, I didn't know that about you, Elliot. Um, I guess, yeah, you, you are really grappling with some... Um, yeah, poignant themes and subjects in your work and it seems very personal as well um so yeah i just i guess i wanted to hear more about past projects that you've worked on or um just hear yeah hear about the kind of shift or the development of your practice from starting your masters to now as well are those themes and subjects things that you've been exploring throughout or is it just purely through the lockdown and the, the past year that we've all been experiencing so when I first started my first, I've always worked on identity. Mm -hmm. So the first stage I actually worked on documenting my town, which is Doncaster. It's, it's undergone a lot of social re, um, urban regeneration. Okay. So you've got sort of these million pound buildings next to, next to houses that were built like 60 years ago and are perhaps oh, wow. not that good anymore. Okay. So sort of looking at the, the old and the new identity of the town. Mm -hmm. My second stage, I looked at my relationship. Mm -hmm. So my partner, Julian, he lives in London. Most mm -hmm. of the time he's actually up here now and has been for a year. But at the time, we were obviously separated by about 200 miles. Yeah. So I sort of documented what was happening there. I was sort of trying to show maybe what a same-sex relationship is, as in 
normal, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. It, that was sort of quite a, a cool thing to play around with, looking at that side of my identity. Yeah. And then now it's kind of like I've become more and more open about talking about my health over the last few years. Sure. I think obviously it is quite a big thing, you know, time to talk, time to change. Yeah. And I kind of just wanted to say, yeah, this is this is what bipolar is like. I just sort of threw it all out there. I thought I've already spoke about my relationship in my town. Let's just go for it. So I guess, yeah, your artistic practice is so, um, yeah, personal and and definitely um, some, yeah, I guess it's, I guess it's a healing process, isn't it as well? Definitely. So it was, oh, sorry. Oh, no, no, you carry on. (laughs) I was just going to say it's really cathartic doing this sort of work as well because it helps you grapple with stuff that's going on inside and sort of when you lay it out on a wall, Mm -hmm. it kind of helps you come to terms with that a bit better. Yeah, for sure. It's really inspiring. Um, Thank you. How how does that kind of reference to the anchor then in your new work? Talk to me a little bit about that. Where did you find that kind of inspiration? So... With bipolar disorder, unless you've got a, like a really, real mild version of it, mm-hmm. you pretty much are going to spend your life on mood stabilizers and medications like that. Mm-hmm. So I sort of thought, when I thought back to how I've developed and changed living with bipolar, I thought, well, the one constant in it is taking prescription medication. That's sort of what keeps me anchored in one place. It keeps me there. Mm-hmm. So that sort of did feature. I've got a collage on this side, which is lots of um, prescriptions, information leaflets stuff like that and my main self-portrait on this side is my face obscured with a mood stabilizer box because that's obviously quite a big part of who I am even if it's a wholly synthetic thing part of the way you see the world sometimes when your mood is at extremes I'm quite thankful I've not had like a really extreme spike in you know a couple of years but the way you're sort of seeing the world everything can seem a bit different so I've got sort of quite moody black and white photos on one side, mm-hmm. these colour photos that the colour got quite distorted, it's damaged film, but I really liked what came out of it. Yeah, sure. And also one of the things that, it sort of ties into why I was using camera, um, different types of cameras, that does, my capacity to hold a camera is quite reliant on whether or not I've got a side effect such as tremor. Yes. So it has all very much featured into how I produce the work, whether it's my mood or some form of side effect or just Mm -hmm. the weather in some cases. There's a lot of things that factor into it. Yeah, of course. That's really interesting. And that kind of physical element as well of taking photographs with side effects. And obviously, you you use colour as a way to kind of reflect those moods and those emotions that you're feeling. It's really interesting. I guess that that brings me to my next uh, question. You're probably bored of answering questions like this, but <laughs> how have you found being a student during a pandemic? Um, it's certainly been um, different. Yeah. Um, obviously, I was used to, for the first you know, year and a half of my degree, coming into Derby once a week. And um, sure. obviously, we got more and more restrictions. It was sort of, we might come in one week, but the next week, it wasn't essential. So we do it over Teams of no session. Uh-huh. But it really has been an exercise in learning how to adapt. Yeah. We obviously don't have access to all the university facilities. Yeah. There's restrictions on where we can go, sort of non-essential travel. Mm-hmm. So it, it's sort of been a, a training session on how to adapt, how to work in a versatile manner. Mm-hmm. It's, however awful that lockdown is for some people, I really have learned a lot from it. So in some respects, I've took one positive from it. Yeah, it's a really good uh, good mindset to to adopt. Yeah, keeping on that kind of positive thought. What's been your biggest achievement for you to, um, during your master's studies? Um, I think it's got to be putting this together. It was obviously the climax of the master's degree, mm-hmm. and I obviously did have some help getting all the wallpaper off and everything. But it's the <laughs> fact that I we were obviously going to be at Artcore originally, which was completely mm-hmm. unfeasible with current lockdown restrictions. Sure. So I think my biggest achievement was the fact that I sort of just got up on a Sunday morning and I was like, right, let's take the wallpaper off. <laughs> I'm going to learn myself how to polyfill. I'm going to paint a wall and not get it all over my hair or something. It was um, <laughs> actually producing this is probably my biggest achievement or the fact that I finally sort of started to find my voice. Yeah. There's a few things. It's hard to decide which I'm proudest no, of. That, yeah, definitely. I think those, um, those skills you, you'll carry forward for you know all of your future projects and, and practice being able to yeah install the work is definitely an, an achievement <laughs> yeah. 
what are your what are your future plans are you hoping to continue your practice in Doncaster or do you have a studio that you work from what what are you hoping to do in the future so um I've been considering not this year but the year after applying to do doctoral studies Amazing. sort of PhD by project yeah which I never would have seen myself doing some time <laughs> back but I sort of, once I'd, you know, done my final presentation for uni, I kind of just thought, actually, I, I'm not done. I thought, <laughs> you know, I'm not done yet. Let's, yeah. let's keep going. So during, you know, with the foreseeable future, we might just be stuck in our houses and stuff like that. But sure. I, it's not going to stop me. Eventually, it's going to come to a point where it's like, right, I need to do something more. Yeah. So I think further studies and then teaching, perhaps. Amazing. So, so, so is it that theory that you really want to pursue or would it be like a practice based um, PhD that you'd be looking for? Practice based. Mm-hmm. Um, theory is something that I have struggled with, I'll be honest about that, because I do come from a non-arts background. Okay. But sort of having that room to develop on artistic practice is really, really appealing to me. It's really great to hear more about your work, Elliot, and thank you so much for being so um, kind of open and honest about your experiences. Fine. I think it'll be really inspiring for people to hear about this. Um, Thank you. So we'll, yeah, obviously be launching the online exhibition with ArtCore um, on the 31st of March. So we'll obviously be sharing more about that. Um, and it would be great to hear more about your work. Maybe you could share some more of your inspirations and influences um, on our social media pages. Oh. Good luck with the uh, PhD planning. <laughs> <laughs> I need oh. all the luck in the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks so much, Elliot. Thank you.